Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to day number 19 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to 3D model a hinged box for 3D printing. We'll take a look at how to set up user parameters, how to apply an as-built joint, and how to prepare the part for 3D printing. Before we get started with the box, let's make sure that our preferences are set up the same way. I'll click on my user profile and then preferences, and I'm going to make sure that my default modeling orientation is set to Z-up, because that's how most 3D printer slicing softwares are set up. If you do have to change any settings here, then be sure to select the apply button and then the OK button. Now if I go down to my display settings, you'll see that I'm in the photo booth environment and that my visual style is set to shaded with visual edges only. You'll also want to make sure that your layout grid and snap to grid are selected under the grid and snaps menu. And last but not least, you'll want to double check that you're in the model workspace. Now let's start creating the bottom lid of our box by first creating a new component. I'll select new component from the assemble dropdown menu. Now in the new component dialog box, I'll make sure that empty component is selected and then I'll type in bottom box for the name and I'll click OK. Now we can begin to draw the box shape. I'll call the rectangle sketch tool with the keyboard shortcut letter R and I'll click on the bottom plane. Then I'll click on the center origin and drag out with my mouse. I'll type out 70 millimeters, hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, and then I'll type out 70 millimeters for the other side. I'll hit the tab key once again, and then you'll notice that we can't do anything other than click on any side of the origin point. So I'll just click in one of the directions, and real quick, I'll point out, like we talked about in day number 17, we always want to make sure that our sketches are fully constrained and dimensioned as signified by all of the sketch lines turning black. Also, before we move on, let's find the sketch in the Fusion 360 browser and we'll click on the word sketch and rename it box. Now, before we get started with the box shape, we'll want to set up some user parameters. I'll go to the Modify drop-down menu, and then I'll select Change Parameters from the bottom of the list. Now I know a lot of you are just getting into Fusion 360, and this may even be your first real CAD program. So let's go ahead and take a minute to discuss what parameters are. If we look at the parameters box, you'll see that we can add a name, a unit, an expression, a value, and we can also add some comments or notes. At its core, parameters are mathematical variables that we can set up, and they're defined by a value. We can then call those variables by their names in order to define sketch elements, feature sizes, and geometry across different components. When we set up parameters, we can define them by a single numerical value, an equation, or we can also reference other parameters. So in some use cases, we may set our parameters up so we can change one single parameter in which all the other aspects of the model are fully updated simultaneously. Now using parameters like this will give you a tremendous amount of control over the model. So to set up some user parameters, we'll click on the plus sign and a dialog box will pop up. We'll then first enter a name. So the first parameter I'm going to set up is the wall thickness for our 3D print. Now, as you're typing out names, you'll notice that we can't use spaces or hyphens. So it's good practice to type out the names in camel case, where each new word is capitalized. For the units, we will leave that set to millimeters, and then we'll type in 1.3 for the wall thickness. 
as I found that that works well with most consumer level FDM 3D printers. For the comment, we can leave this blank if we want as it's not required, or you can type something out that may help a colleague understand the parameter. So I may type something out like FDM 3D printer thickness, and then I'll click OK. Now we're going to add two more user parameters. We'll click on the plus symbol again and add box height, and we'll enter 70 millimeters and click OK. And for the last user parameter, we're going to set up the gap of our hinge. I'll click the plus sign once again, and I'll type out gap, and then 0.5 for the value, and click OK. Now again, these are just some user parameters that we've set up to start out with, but we can always go back to this menu at any time to change these parameters, or we can always add additional parameters. And let's go ahead and click OK to close the parameter dialog box. Let's extrude the sketch to make a cube. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E for extrude, and then click on the sketch. Now if we look at our extrude dialog box, you'll see that we can type in the distance of our extrude. And we can also type in our user parameters in this field. So I can delete all of this text and then start to type out box height. And you'll see that after I type out the first letter, it recommends the box height user parameter for us. So we can just go ahead and click on that and we'll click OK. And if we look at our model from the home position, you'll see that the user parameter worked as expected and we have a nice 70 millimeter cube as that was the value we set for the box height parameter. At this point, we'll need to make the cube hollow by using the shell tool. I'll select Shell from the modified drop down list. And with the Shell tool, if we just select one face, it will essentially cut away that face and create the thickness we apply. But we want our cube to be completely closed because we'll use the split feature later on. So, in order to keep the object completely closed, we'll have to select all six faces of this cube. And we'll need to type in our user parameter wall thickness for the inside thickness, and we'll click OK. Now, because our shape is completely closed, it's hard to tell if this actually worked. So to check that the shell worked properly, we'll go up to the Inspect menu, and then select Section Analysis. We'll click on any side of the cube, and then drag the arrow in a bit, and we can see that our shell did in fact work as we wanted. So I'll just hit the cancel button in the dialog box. Now we'll need to create a plane in order to split our box in half. We could use a mid plane from the construct drop down menu, but I want to show you another thing that we can do with user parameters. So I'll select offset plane, and then I'll select the top of the cube. For the distance, I'll type out the minus symbol because I want this to go in the direction of my cube. Then I'll type out the box height parameter and we'll divide it in half using the forward slash and then the number two. And you'll see that that put our construction plane directly in half or the middle of the cube. And if we go to update the box height later on, our construction plane will always be split directly in the middle because we used half of the box height user parameter. So I'll go ahead and click OK to confirm these results. I now want to split this cube in half, so I'll select Split Body from the Modify drop-down menu. I'll first have to select the body to split, so I'll select the cube, and then I'll select the construction plane for the splitting tool, and then click OK. Now if we take a look in the body folder of the Fusion 360 browser, we'll see that we have a top body and a bottom body. And let's go ahead and rename these real quick. And we're done using this construction plane, so I'll click on it and simply select the keyboard shortcut letter V to hide it. Now before we go any further, I'll also make sure to save this. I'll click the save icon and type out hinged box and click save. 
Now we'll need to create the hinge of the box. I'll right click on the face of the bottom body and click Create Sketch. Then, if I zoom in here, we're going to want to create our hinge in the middle of the two bodies. I'm going to first hit the keyboard letter L for line, and I'm going to draw a line 2.95 millimeters from the center over to the right. Then, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C for center circle, and I'm just going to click on the end of the line and draw out three circles as we'll dimension them in just a bit. Now I'll hit the keyboard letter D for dimension and I'll click on the innermost circle. I'll type the parameter wall thickness. Then I'll hit the letter D again and I'll select the inner circle and then the second circle and I'm going to type out gap as this is going to create the gap between our pin and the hinge. And finally I'll hit letter D once again and I'll select the second circle and then the third circle, and I'll make this one the parameter wall thickness. And then I'll hit the escape key to clear the dimension command. I'll hit letter L for line again, and I'm going to draw a line from the edge of the bottom base to the outermost circle. And I'll make sure that the line snaps in where it's tangent to the circle. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the top. Then I'll click letter D for dimension again, and I want to add a 45 degree angle for this line. As 45 degrees is kind of our maximum threshold for getting a nice angled surface in 3D printing. So I'm just going to select both lines here and then type in 45 degrees. And once again, I'll repeat the same step for the top. And you'll notice that our sketch is completely black, so it's fully constrained. I'll go ahead and hit Stop Sketch, and then I'll rename the sketch in the Fusion 360 browser by clicking on it, and then I'll type out the word Hinge. Now to complete the hinge and actually 3D print the box, you'll have to click the link to part two in the video description. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.